and they say you have no right, you prove that you do by going back to the river. You know, Nuji, I was telling Nuji, I said, they can't do this, Nuji. We hear the, the, the doors slam behind us, we're going in jail. We always laugh about that. Billy is always saying, you, we can't, they can't do this to us, but they lock us up. The movement was uh, uh, us going to jail, you know, right here at the landing here. Fort Lewis is over there. The state game department was watching us 24 hours a day here. And uh, we continued to fish. We fished every day. We continued to fish. We'd fought him every day. We'd fight him. We'd go to jail, get out of jail, come back, go to jail again, get out of jail, come back, fishing. We never gave up. You know, we just continued the struggle going on and on. They started uh, going to jail. There were fights along the river. I mean, these guys were out to hurt you. They weren't just doing simple things. They wanted to hurt you, and they wanted to hurt you bad. They'd carry these long flashlights, and it was like they were terrorizing the Indians. It was really a hard time and a real struggle, you know, and that's what's so angry is when these guys went to jail, we sat home and we starved as families, but, you know, it didn't matter to them. And but I think the battles were hard. It was hard on families. And it wasn't, you know, just Nuji. It was Nuji's kids, Nuji's wife, Babe's family, you know, and Billy's family and Don McLeod's family. You know, the kids are crying because their dads are being hit over the head. They're being put in jail, you know, because the state thinks they have the right to tell Indian people what to do. And, and grandparents were having to watch kids, you know, because when they could no longer fight. Then the women had to go out and fight like Jeanette, you know, Suzanne Sataika, Maisel Bridges, Allison, Suzette, you know, Billy Louise and us. We would all go out there and we would try to do the fight, you know, with the state of Washington. And when we got done, we didn't have anything. They took our boats. They took our nets. Did they take the fish too? Yeah. They, took they just took everything from you. They'd just come down on us, you know, the the Washington, the whole state of Washington. I mean, people from the other side of the mountain were called in, as Hank was talking about. And uh, but it, but but it it was pre-announced, and there yeah. were, you know, the Indians were together in support, so there was, and unfortunately there was primarily Indian women and Indian yeah. children, right. and then the renegade fishermen. Um, and I mean, we had a battle. I mean, it was clubbing and everything. Uh, I mean, it was just a knock down, drag out fight, and a lot of our kids and women were there, and uh, oars, swinging oars, and battling, you know. And, uh, you know, it just was a, a day to remember, you know. On October 13th, 1965, I was 12. There was, um, there was a lot of women and children there. And um, so we're all just goofing around and mom says, uh, all of a sudden, she said, look. And we turned around and, and these game agents are coming out of the bushes behind. And these guys are big guys. And we see them in their jet boats, put them in the water, and they're running, running with these jet boats and, and putting them in the water. And they ran that canoe. And now my little brother can't swim. And, um, but luckily where they were at when they ran that canoe, he could walk, you know, back. And then the attack was just on. They, um, they grabbed my uh, cousin and and was pounding her head into the, and, and, and we're young. She must have been about 14. And uh, they're just 
slamming people around. They have Dorian in, in the bushes and Don George, and, and they got their shirts off and they're hitting them with these um, blackjacks, I think they call them. And uh, they're grabbing my dad and, and my mom and my, I mean, just, it just went chaos. And, and my grandmother was just, uh, just fear was in her face. We were trying to figure out how, what the strategy was going to be for all of us, just trying to figure out, uh, you know, we're going to fish, we're going to have fish-ins, we're going to do whatever we have to do to, uh, to get the treaties of the United States up to the level of everybody's thinking and, uh, and uh, make the United States protect us. We had an, a fish camp under the I-5 bridge, the only Puyallup River uh, tribal land that was there left. They raided us that morning and threw us all in jail. Uh, one of the key elements and most effective, what makes as long as rivers run effective in the end is the footage on the Puyallup encampment bust of 1970. The open aggression of, of the police force, police power of the state of Washington. The, these things moved uh, the world beyond where it was at that point for Indian people, uh, for Nisqually's and Puyallup's, but also other Indian people. And they gassed us that day. They, they gassed all of us that day. And it so happened that that day, the United States Attorney General was watching us that day. And he got gas too. You know, they all come down to see what was going on. They knew that the, the sheriff and the police and state patrol, all of them were gonna come down on us. And so they, they all come to watch, the federal government come to watch. And, uh, and they watched us, and they also got gas that day. And that's, that triggered the U.S. versus Washington. That, that the, the United States said we're gonna take, we're gonna take on the United, U.S. versus Washington. And so uh, the case goes, before Judge George Hugo Bolt, a conservative judge appointed by President Eisenhower. The tribal attorneys wondered at the beginning of the case if they shouldn't try to have him removed from the case, but they, they went with him. They, they saw that uh, in some of the early motions he was paying attention, that he didn't seem to have a predisposition, a mindset against the idea that the treaties might carry significant rights. <clears throat> the testimony of the elders was very important at trial. And uh, they told stories about treaty time and the state attorneys objected. And Judge Bolt let the testimony in because he understood that the oral tradition can send down very valuable information. And he heard them out. And on February 12th, 1974, Judge Bolt intentionally chose Lincoln's birthday uh, as a, a statement of this opinion, which by any reasonable standard is one of the great moments in American law. Judge Bolt handed down a decision that the tribes can be proud of, but every American should be proud of because it honored a sacred promise and it allowed dispossessed peoples, the least among us at that time, to have their most sacred rights protected. I have so much respect for Judge Bolt that he was threatened, death threats, but he never took a step backwards. 
He made one of the greatest decisions that was ever made that set a precedent clear across the United States that tribes do exist, treaties do exist, tribes are sovereign, and now tribes are co-managers. But it was a great day. We're now seen as leaders. They're now saying, if you want this done, get the tribe involved. If you want to make this thing happen, the tribe is, is how it's going to happen. And so they look to us as leaders now. They respect that, that we care. But I think the Bolt decision really opened the door for the tribes, you know, and so, and I hope for, and I, I believe in some of that is, uh, Bolt had, uh, you know, everyone has to enhance the, the salmon runs, you know, so. I think that's probably one of the greatest aspects of the Bolt decision, you know, restore the salmon for everyone, you know. We're, we're managing our, our resource. We, uh, we have the infrastructure, the best infrastructure these 20 tribes have. The best infrastructure in the world is right here in our country. We're managing this sound, Puget Sound down here. We're managing all of our watersheds and rivers. <laughs> And that's what we're doing right here, to see all of our fishermen fishing and enjoying life. This is what it's all about. Every, every day I come down here when our, fishing, our fishermen are fishing, it just makes me feel good that, that uh, our boys and girls are fishing on the river. And nobody is coming down arresting them. They, they regulate themselves. And uh, that's why you see us pulling our nets out today. We don't put them back in till next week, let the salmon go up and spawn. And this is a regulation that we do, and we're proud of that. Before the decision in 1974, the state of Washington just took as many fish as they could. They never, they never regulated anything. Until 1974, the federal judge come in and said, it's going to be regulated, and it is today. And that, that's who we are. We're Indian people. We've always regulated our natural resource. All of our whole thousands of years, we have regulated this country. We regulated our trees. We, our, our medicines are all over here, you know, and our... <clears throat> Our culture is with us today, our language and our dances and our drums. All of these things are, are, are what makes us whole. We want to continue to work with all of our, our people around us, uh, you know, to keep our water, keep our trees, you know, keep our habitat, you know, keep fighting for the salmon keep fighting for our animals, the food chain of life. And I, I got to get this message down to our younger people that are here now. These things just didn't grow out of the water. They were, they came out of blood from the tribes. Our guys got shot at and they, were, they got beat up. They got equipment stolen, tore up. Just so much happened down there, but we're, we're still we're still in there fighting. When I'm in a meeting and I, th I think about my parents, I think about the people, I think about what happened on the river. I mean, because actually, 
they were fighting for the treaty rights, for the freedom for people to, you know, exercise their rights. And so, yeah, every, every day, yeah, I mean, we deal with issues like that. Uh, and, and I think about that, you know, it's always there. So I think that uh, the future is, is up to the genera coming generations to make that determination. Hopefully they're going to find, follow, follow their heart, be an Indian first. Follow that Indian heart, and it'll take you in the right direction. Take it with confidence. Build your your mind and your strength. Use what opportunity we have now to to help to build on those policies. The choice is yours. You know, anybody that works together always better than fighting. That's what I try to teach everybody. Respect yourself, respect others, and a little love will go a long way.